Hey guys, Megan O'Leavy here at the MGM Grand. We are gearing up for UFC 125, and I'm here with the president, Mr. Dana White. All right, before we talk about the fight card, let's talk about your big announcement today. Chuck Liddell officially retiring, and he's an executive vice president for the UFC. Can you talk about his responsibilities and how you came about uh, the decision to hire him in that capacity? Yeah, you know, Chuck Liddell has been with me basically. I managed Chuck Liddell before we even bought the UFC. So he and I have been together for 12 or 13 years. And the way that I look at it is he's always been in business with us, you know, since the day we started uh, and even before. And, and it's very unique to have, and I don't think there's ever been a, a, a fighter promoter relationship like this in the history of the world. You know, as long as he and I have been together through the ups, the downs, the success, all the things that usually, you know, strain on a relationship. He and I have, have, have stayed uh, very close friends and, and the way I look at it, business partners. And, you know, everybody knows that I've been yapping about him retiring for probably the last couple of years. And, you know, it's, it's tough to go from being a huge superstar like he is walking in with, you know, 20,000 people screaming your name and all the stuff that goes with it. But I think I got him in a, in a good place now where he, uh, you know, he's gonna move on to the next chapter of his life and, and his career. And as far as his duties go, he, he's the executive vice president <clears throat> of uh, business development. And the way that we work as a company, Lorenzo and I don't walk into a room and just start barking orders to everybody. This is what we're going to do. We've hired a, a team of uh, executives whom we respect. Uh, we respect their opinion and we want their input. We want to know what they have to say. And Chuck Liddell is now part of that team. Was it a general consensus to hire him or did you receive any negative feedback, you know, hiring a, a former fighter? From who? Anyone at the UFC? Well, <laughs> push everything I just said aside. Me and Lorenzo make that decision, you know, you know, who, who we're going to hire. And like I said, we've done a, a great job of building a great team. So, no, no feedback. Well, Chuck is obviously very excited. Well, let's talk about Saturday's card. Frankie Edgar is defending his title again. Um, he's beaten BJ Penn, who's one of the best known fighters in the sport. And yet it seems like the fans don't really give him as much respect as, say, some of the other title holders. Do you think if he avenges his loss to Gray, the only man to ever beat him, he may gain a little bit more respect from the fans? You can't tell, you know. Uh, it's definitely uh, correct. And what you say, that, that he hasn't earned the respect yet. I mean, he beat BJ Penn twice, but still doesn't get the respect. I, I, the guys were just telling me earlier that he's the underdog here in Las Vegas. So, um, you know, may, maybe if he goes out and, and, and beats Gray, he'll, he'll start to get respected a little bit more. But who knows? I, I, I can't answer that question. Now, his opponent, Gray Maynard, has been criticized for having a very boring uh, fighting style. Does it bother you at all the way he approaches his fights? Do you wish he came out more exciting, or are you fine with the way he, uh, he works in the octagon? I don't ever tell guys how to fight. Gray Maynard is who he is, and uh, you know it's been said about John Fitch. John Fitch is who he is. You know I, I don't ever try to change a guy's style or tell him how to fight or any of that stuff. Um, Gray Maynard has conducted himself as a true professional. When I went in and said and, and said you know he's not going to get this next title shot, Frankie is. You know never once did he come out and have anything negative to say. He waited. He you know he waited for his turn, and now it's his turn. Now, uh, let's talk about the co-main event, uh, Brian Stan versus Chris Lieben. Uh, Brian asked for this fight, and Chris is coming off a hot streak. I mean, he has three wins, he's, he's doing great. What do you think about this fight? What do you suspect the outcome will be? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a fun fight, I know that, and, and you're right. Uh, you know, Chris Lieben's probably the fighter of 2010. I mean, he literally catapulted himself back into the mix and uh, had a bunch of exciting fights. Won, I think he won knockout of the night, fight of the night and fought back to back in two weeks, two tough fights. Um, so a win over Chris Lieben for Brian Stan is huge right now. And for Lieben uh, to get in there and, and mix it up and get another win under his belt, he, you know, he's chipping away and getting himself back into the mix. Lieben's coming off, you know, uh, USA Today actually gave him honorable mention for submission of the year, I believe, and fighter of the year and fight of the year. Um, He's had some personal issues, some troubles in the past. He said at the press conference today, he's a new fighter. Does it ever uh, bother you wondering what his mental outlook is coming into each fight? No, um, you know, again, Chris Lieben's one of these guys, you know, even though he still has some problems here and there, he's, he's a completely different person than he was season one of The Ultimate Fighter. He's grown up a lot, he's matured as a fighter, he's matured as a, as a, as a man, you know. Um, you know, and, and things are gonna happen sometimes, but you know, I'm ha look at what's today. Today is uh, Wednesday, 
right? The fight Saturday. Chris Lieben looks awesome already. He's in great shape. Took this fight serious. He's ready to go. So, yeah, I, I think Chris is right where he needs to be. Okay, another guy on the card, Brandon Vera. Uh, he was a shining star in the UFC, um, an up-and-comer. Everybody was talking about him. He had a big buzz around him. Now he's kind of seemed to dwindle a little bit. Do you think this fight is do or die for him? That's a big fight for him, no doubt. It's a big fight for him, and it's a big fight for Tiago. Listen, nobody wants to be in this sport and lose. Everybody wants to win. But for me, it's it's not about, you know, people ask me, if, is this a do or die for this guy? I'll... I'll all I ask of guys, listen, everybody's going to lose here and there. You come out and you perform on Saturday night. If, listen, I can't stand the guys who go out and talk all this smack. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and this is where I'm at, and, and then go out and don't do anything. Those are the guys that are going to get cut. The guys that, 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 that stick around are the guys who go out and perform. And uh, I, don't, I, I just don't see how this fight isn't a, a great fight. Brandon's head is back. He's very talented, well-rounded, and Tiago Silva comes in to finish people. It's going to be a great card. Now let's talk about one of your newest signees, uh, Kid Yamamoto. I know you're very excited about that. Are you looking at any other international fighters to sign in the near future? Yeah, I, I like Kid Yamamoto. I've been talking to him for a long time. Uh, was trying to get him into the WC a while ago. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to finally have him. It's going to be interesting to see how he, uh, how he performs in the UFC. But, yeah, we're always looking for, you know, the best talent in the world, uh, no matter where they're from. Other promotions, possibly. Yeah, I mean, if if, if guys uh, if guys are that good, and I believe they're that good, absolutely. Now, Jose Aldo was supposed to fight on this card. He injured himself. Do you have any word of when he could be back fighting in the octagon? I don't know. I don't know how long he's going to be. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll play that one by ear. All right, and finally, I have to ask you. I was bugging you about this in Montreal. Can you tell us if Brock Lesnar and Frank Mir are coaching the Ultimate Fighter this season? I can't. Would you like to announce it with Heavy when you're ready? Um, yeah, when, when, when I'm ready to announce it, uh, I don't know where I'm going to announce it, but yeah, when I'm ready to announce it, I'll... You'll give us the call, right? Yeah, I'll call you guys. Absolutely. All right, thanks so much, Dana. For more UFC 125 information, be sure to check out heavy.com.